baba mu district ngemu ne sawa zina bantu baba mu bitunde benja ulo We have avio and we have powder gold. We are getting stones and sun again. Then we put in the machine, we crush it. We get a, a powder sand, which is crushed very well. Then we process to get the gold. Two systems we are using. One, we can use water to get gold. And second, we can use mercury to get gold. Formerly, we used to use matox and mortars for breaking, cracking these stones. And in the process, we use mercury for collecting the gold. But nowadays, we use still those mattocks and mortars and also ball mills. But still in the same process, we are continuing using mercury. At the panning stage, mercury is usually used uh, out of choice, and then later on uh, adding a mixing of water and then decanting, then later on the amalgam, the gold that has been attracted to the mercury is squeezed out and then it is burnt off. <laughs> NEMA, on behalf of the government of Uganda, concluded a study on the National Minamata Initial Assessments, and it was discovered that over 30,000 kilograms of mercury are released into the environment annually. The result of mercury being released from various sources, um, secondary uses, and therefore, this requires specific interventions that needs to be done to ensure that uh, this, this is mitigated. We did the study in Namayingo, in, uh, in uh, Yipanda, in Mubende, and, uh, and um, that the study found that uh, there is a good proportion of artisan and small-scale gold miners who have accumulated high levels of mercury in their bodies. And Karamoja, Ankole, Chigezi, Central and Eastern. Central and Eastern regions stand out in terms of use of mercury with the, the central being number one, followed by the eastern region. Central uses about uh, over 7,000 kilograms of mercury, followed by the eastern region, about 5,000 kilograms of mercury per year. Uh, in Karamoja region, not a lot of it is used, but it's slowly by slowly starting, especially in districts of Amdat and Nagapri Purit. I should generally say 90% of the gold produced in Uganda is by use of mercury. It is only the 10% that is used, uh, uh, which is extracted through gravitation methods only. As for me, I wasn't caring about the mercury. I would wash them, I would sometimes even eat them, burn them in the kitchen, and I wasn't aware of anything. Naruala, umuko no kurui ruwa mashule. Umuko no gunu guanu ma, e ibanga, engeri yena rinko sa mashule. I used to read well. I'm worried maybe because of it. Now, now I need to use glass, but I cannot agree, but I hope maybe it has not affected me. And inside me, I don't know, because I used to, we used to use a lot of mercury. We're not caring how much we're using. Mercury has certain key properties. It is very toxic. It is uh, volatile, like it evaporates, and it's persistent in the environment. Uh, so it can stay between 6 to 18 months suspended in the air before it eventually comes down. So it is very detrimental to the human health and the environment. I know the community here is wild because we've ever enforced and they know the repercussions. Most of them are small-scale artisanal miners. And when it comes to restoration, 
they come to do restoration. Because mining is something that people come in every day. Whoever see, may see Faye has failed school, saying let me, let me join in. And when they come in, some of them don't know this, since we don't have a training, mining training colleges enough in this nation. Mchichunge maisha ni hata hii gold ni napata. Ako ya mwili yako. Kama pana chunga mwili yako, hata hii gold mtu ngini ataweza peleka nini? Pesa? Alafu wa ukufe. Na sika wa kwa juu ya nini? Kwa juu ya mekuri. My work as a district natural resource officer is to ensure that communities are aware of the national legal framework that is managing natural resources and environment at the same time. And uh, before conducting any law enforcement in terms of irregular environmental management or utilization, I have to carry out community awareness meetings. And uh, you have to sensitize people about uh, the law before you do enforcement. They need to be regulated. And we are also organizing them into associations so that they are known and registered then we can be able to regulate what they do. Because it is a business, but we don't want them, when they are doing their business, they cause harm to others. Like we have already got complaints, those in Ibanda, whatever they are doing upstream, is af affecting those who are innocent in other districts down. Because the same river where they pour this is what the others are using for other domestic uses. The, the active miners have heard about the dangers of mercury to their health because a lot has a lot of messages have been delivered to them on this by not the challenge of uh, these risks risks or benefits that are not easily seen not easily tangible it's very difficult for one to appreciate and perceive that this true this might be a danger or not Nema's role here has been mainly creating awareness, collaborating with civil society to promote alternatives to mercury use, uh, ensuring environmental restoration. But again, it has been a challenge because uh, they are migratory, even their informal nature. We've been able to mobilize some of the districts to come up with ordinances, the bylaws. You know, districts are also governments. So Hueju has done that, but what we realize is when Buhezi does it, the miners run now to Ibanda, which does not have the bylaw. So that's where we are going to work with all the districts so that we have the bylaws in, stay in place. We have had NGOs coming here to help us, to sensitize us about the dangers of mining and the benefits that we go through. Life is not all about money in the gold sector, but we also need to care about ourselves and also care about the community and our children in the future. So in essence, we have to do what we call responsible mining. Since we have not yet seen an alternative to the use of mercury, it takes time to tell a miner that, you know, don't use mercury. We'll ask you, what else do I have to use? A jetufuna munga tunakiza, agazina mashuri, ezitowa okusinga, yetuwa alifuna azanga nga kulinashe, and this gold of around here, they are very tiny. And unless you use mercury, you can't get any in a gold. These are different from other parts. Some parts are about nuts, big ones. But like here, very small ones. You can't, you can't even see it unless you use a mercury. So I think the best thing is to come with that alternative way of mining so that these people will survive. At the same time, assist them to get clean water, just like that. If there is an alternative and it's brought to these people, I think they can abandon the use of mercury. They feel mercury gathers that gold. There is what they call borax. Borax is very effective in the recovery of gold. And it is harmless to both humans, animals, and also the rest of the environment. So it has been a scientifically proven. This is a good one. So desensitization goes on in terms of workshops, but as usual, 
you know, in environmental management, we have instruments. It is like when a, doc a doctor uses a dose, you begin with a lower dose, then you go on increasing. So the lowest dose we begin with is we talk to you. We say, look, what you are doing is wrong. Can you please stop it? Or you use an alternative because we have an alternative to mercury. That is borax. Mercury is more available than the borax than the alternative we are giving. If the, the bad method is more available, user friendly, more user access, more accessible, it becomes a challenge that you may not succeed in taking them into the other extremely better method because it is not available. The trace of that mercury, I'm informed that it comes from Congo, Rwanda, and Burundi. That's where it comes from. Uh, you know, if you if you look through this border, it's all all plain. You can ride your motorcycle there. There are communities which are living next to each other. So if a person wants to bring it into the country, it actually can go through those porous points. By being a party to the convention, we have to face down the use of some of these products. And for most of them, it's by 2020. We are looking at a phased down approach and then a later on phased out approach, especially where alternatives are not yet available. When, when we started this international engagement and then when we finally signed, signed it to the Minamata Convention, it became imperative that we, we organize ourselves to collect data about where mercury is, the roots of uh, exposure, and particularly in artisanal mining, where it was known that it was being used, and it was impacting negatively on the environment as well as on the public, on the health of those individuals who were involved in mining. The major, major global concern that was first seen was the Minamata disease in Japan. There was a factory that was producing fertilizers using mercury as a catalyst. That was in the 1930s. And not until the 1960s was it realized that Akri people were getting poisoned. People in the surrounding areas were eating fish from that Minamata Bay. Initially, scientists were puzzled about uh, that particular type of disease, which uh, specifically attacked the central nervous system, yeah, eventually it killed a lot of people. When we really started taking concern on the issue of mercury and the impact on the environment. Actually, maybe much more earlier, when mercury had impact on the fishery market in Uganda, that's where the attention came in. Because before, nobody really thought that mercury was being misused, because most of the negative impacts arise from misuse of mercury. The issues of uh, waste management, we can educate people through formal education programs, which are mainly uh, supported by uh, CSOs and NGOs. We work with them, see how they can handle the issues that are around them. Issues of waste, issues of water management, issues of CC, uh, health, issues of management of resources like, for example, uh, how do you manage river banks, how do you manage wetlands, how do you manage uh, environmental changes that come out in the, in the production processes? The way waste management is being taken should change because we dump a lot of waste that contains mercury into our drainage channels. We have what we call scouts. So each time a truck comes to dump, there is somebody watching to see what has actually been brought at that moment. So we have some form of traceability at one point or another. About eight years ago, you'd find that there was even seven to eight years ago, they used to mix medical waste with, uh, with municipal waste. When you found that out, we started fining the collectors and we'd find them to a cost of actually four million shillings. So it was very expensive for you to bring anything other than municipal waste for anybody into the landfill. We have to do our part to ensure that there is sustainable utilization of these natural resources, there is conservation of our environment, and there is a harmonious relationship between the local community who are natives. Today we are speaking of a minor population of 32,000, uh, of which 1-5% to 5 are foreign nationals, so it's growing big. We are talking of an, uh, a total workforce, uh, a value chain workforce of over 400,000 people who include women and children, for example, women 
account for about 25 to 25%. Uh, of course, we, we, we do not boast of having children in the sector, that is uh, child labor, but it also accounts for about 0 to 5% of children being employed, uh, working in the mining sector. Illiteracy levels in this community, they are actually very, very, very high. I think it would take it something like around the, maybe 85 uh, percent of the people here uh, are illiterate and, and the cause of all this was the quick search for money and the issues of child, uh, child labor. Children dropping out of school simply because they want to run and access uh, money in, a, in the most easiest way. So they see school as a long process of accessing, I mean, uh, getting them to, 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 to have the money. That's why you see these young men here trying to get life, okay? Yes, a way of survival. Since this is a holiday period, of course they have to look for survival. You have seen small children. If you go down there, you see small children panning gold. This is not healthy. Communities here have been affected, like any other part of Uganda. The scourge of AIDS and then these other social problems that come about. There has been a gold rush somewhere in the neighborhood here. And you know, you're hearing people saying if a woman is to, to get the OA, you know, the men have to sleep with her. The spread of HIV, STDs, and the early pregnancies are not a question in this place. And we have scenarios where people are, are coming from uh, our nearby district to Quen. Some of them are from Greek, where we have some ladies who come to exchange uh, themselves for, for gold. And it has reached the point that our community has been reported that some women who cannot afford the mercury, because a, a decimal point of mercury is about 50,000. And some people find it very expensive. And there are cases that they have reported some women exchange themselves for, for mercury. So we have to sensitize our community on these things. And to make matters worse, even the girls who sell in the bars, we don't know where they come from, but the girl child is brought here, I mean to promote somebody's business. We have many incidents of mines collapsing and killing miners. For example, between 2017 and 18 in Karamoja region alone, about 19 lives were lost. In Kabong district alone, between June and July 2018, eight lives were lost through mine collapses. And remember, that is what is reported. There are a lot of them that are not reported countrywide. We are now in a stage where we are going to establish a standards, especially which are national or nationally oriented. Then we will be able to. Our focus now is we are focusing on the real areas where there is a problem, and that's at sand of mining. That is where there is the biggest problem because the exposure to the users. The exposure to the environment is uh, definitely there. Having ratified the convention, we look forward to having support both technical and financial in developing guidelines in revising our laws to address the concerns at the ASGM sites. Already, Uganda has participated as a signatory. It has participated in the development of uh, guidelines for sound interim storage of mercury and mercury wastes, and we also look forward to that. Sorry.